Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And, uh, yeah, I guess you, uh, I guess you read the title. I have, um, I have finally listened to all the Nine Inch Nails albums. So I guess what, uh, spurred this on, why it, uh, this ended up happening, is, uh, like, a re I got a, a Patreon request, uh, for uh, a different, like, kind of industrial rock kind of thing. And uh, even though it was like only a surface level comparison popped into my mind after listening to like one and a half tracks of the request, I, I still kind of, di I didn't want yet another video in which I bring up Nine Inch Nails and mention that I have only listened to the Downward Spiral. I, that <laughs> so I took the opportunity to finally, as per all the requests that I've gotten over the years, just finally sit down with their whole catalog pin down some thoughts. And while I don't really see myself, uh, like, doing a series on this band, they're, they're a little too out of my element, uh, at the same time, uh, I have too many thoughts on them to just, like, leave it in, like, a Twitter thread or just put it by the wayside, so that's why I decided to record this whole little video for you guys as, a, like, just something. <laughs> to like put my thoughts out there. Uh, it's, I hope you enjoy this. To start with, I should probably mention my thoughts on the downward spiral and get that out of the way first, cause it's gonna echo through a lot of uh, my thoughts on the rest of their catalog and all that stuff. Uh, I've kind of gone over my thoughts on this one in the past, mentioned it offhand. Uh, the downward spiral is an album that I respect, but do not enjoy. I am not a noise guy or a metal guy in any capacity. <laughs> and while I can totally get why this album is so heavily acclaimed, why that everyone just goes nuts over this album, why there is a dedicated uh, diehard fan base that wants uh, Trent Reznor to only make this album over and over for the rest of his life, I, I like it for the fact that it uh, introduced a whole bunch of uh, non-electronic listeners to electronic music. Uh, and I, I like it for that. That's kind of why I have uh, made this video. But at the same time, yeah, again, on a personal level, I, there's like uh, two tracks I like on here that I like. Um, I like Hurt. I like A Warm Place, uh, I, I can get behind Closer, I guess, that's about it. The rest I can take or leave. So uh, I think the first surprise for me was uh, listening to uh, Pretty Hate Machine and actually realizing, oh, this, this is actually pretty good, I like this. I think whenever, like, it comes to industrial music, I tend to be more into, like, EBM and that kind of stuff over like industrial rock. So like the Pretty Hate Machine is basically just 80s synth pop. It's edgy 80s synth pop. <laughs> it, it wasn't nearly as out of my element as I thought it was going to be. And and Reznor has the tunes and hooks to back himself up. Like this is this is this is a catchy album. It's it's nice for that. There is definitely a part of me who kind of wishes Reznor like focused more on these kinds of sounds in the rest of his career instead of you know, all his stuff being so much more metal tinged that became more the NIN hallmark, you know? Uh, but it, it, I guess little bits of it came back here and there. We'll get to that later though. Uh, the next uh, album to mention is uh, The Fragile from 1999. This was another weird one for me. Like, if this album were not a double album, if it were just the first disc and that was it, this would probably be my favorite Nine Inch Nails album overall. I really like this album's pacing and variety. I, I like the fact that it balances things out between like his more down tempo and abstract material and you know, the, the rougher metal tinge stuff that he's known for and that kind of thing. And it's like really, it's pretty well balanced in terms of like making sure that none of the sounds get too stale. But on the other hand, uh, I always tap out immediately after the first disc ends, and I cannot make it through this entire thing in one sitting. And that's not to say that, like, the second half doesn't also have its highlights. 
Uh, I like Starfuckers Incorporated. That's a nice late period highlight in spite of how absolutely freaking ridiculous it is. Uh, and I also like uh, the ending, uh, Ripe with Decay, I think it is. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice, satisfying finish to this thing. And yeah, there's other solid moments here and there. It's just, disc two is markedly less consistent or interesting than disc one. It doesn't have any of the good tunes like, uh, we're all in this together. <laughs> No, we're we're in this together. Not not the high school musical one. Uh, I like the title track, the the down tempo ones like what the frail La Mer, some of those others. This one is a lot better. It, it just kind of had me wishing like that the two discs of this album uh, differentiated from each other a bit more. Like if the if if disc one and disc two had like markedly different feels from each other, they're pretty much the same album kind of, except disc two is worse. Uh, <laughs> And the way it is, this is The Fragile is still a good album. It's just one that leaves me completely burnt out if I listen to the whole thing in one go, and I need at least an entire Stereo Lab album to watch it out at the end. Uh, the next album is uh, With Fatifa. <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, I don't actually have much to say about that one. Uh, it is good, so it's all right. Uh, I like the first half of it. There's there's a lot of good catchy tracks in the uh, first half of With Teeth. Uh, but after the track only, it drops off for me really hard. I, it pretty much loses me by that point. If the album ended there, probably would have been, like, one of the better ones. The rest of this album is just not that interesting. It's, it's kind of made redundant by other ones afterwards. But that is still better than, uh, Year Zero, which, uh, I'm gonna not gonna mince words, that was probably my least favorite out of all of the Nine Inch Nails albums. Like, I, I wanted to like that one because I, I knew survivalism because uh, Dead Mouse remixed it on Well, One is Less Than Two. Also kind of interesting that, like, the original survivalism is, like, kind of a little off-brand for them. It's, like, kind of a, a more up-tempo, got a more, like, triplet focus beat. It doesn't sound like any other Nine Inch Nails track. And then uh, the Dead Mouse remix of it makes it sound like the exact average of every Nine Inch Nails track ever. <laughs> but yeah, aside from that one track, which I do still like, uh, the rest of Year Zero was just boring. I'm sorry. Like, I just thought that Year Zero stuck compositionally to their firmly established style a bit too much. And it just didn't do enough interesting with it sonically to really grab my attention, so... Like, I'm told that it's, like, it was a step up in lyrics. Like, supposedly this one has, like, some kind of more political edge. I wasn't listening to the lyrics on pretty much any of this. The, when I heard some of the shit bars in The Fragile, and I'm like, I'm, I'm tuning this out. There's other tracks on it, I guess, like, Capital G is the only other one I can think of that I thought was pretty good, but, uh, yeah, I, I, this one didn't hold my attention much at all. I'm, I'm gonna have to say this one was a pass for me. So uh, I guess the next one to mention is uh, Ghosts 1 through 4 from 2008. Uh, okay, this one, oof. When I started out this marathon, I expected this one to be my favorite. I thought that, okay, this is a like a two hour experimental ambient project. It's entirely instrumental. This sounds like the kind of thing that would be right up my alley. This sounds like they're finally doing something that's more in my element. And it just wasn't. Like, it's too underdeveloped, it's too unfocused. These 36 tracks all feel like demos. And for like every nice ambient cut or like some of the nice piano ones, there was another cut that's like, th just kind of like another like instrumental industrial rock kind of cut. It just sounds like filler from one of their other any number of albums. And it just, they, there just wasn't enough of a vibe for me to like sink into. It's just too all over the place. And even the ambient cuts, like, they were nice, but they, they, were, they weren't like anything mind blowing or anything. Like, I, I guess I liked the first two piano cuts. I, I liked the one that Lil Nas X sampled for Old Town Road. Uh, I, there was one that had like vibraphones on it or something. 
that's I can't remember anything else that was on this. This this was this was a letdown. I'm not gonna lie. After hearing ghosts, I'm I was like just so freaking burnt out. I was starting to think I should just give up on this marathon entirely because if, if this if this one album that I clearly should have been get getting into is sounds like this, then clearly I'm not gonna like anything else. Though it is a good thing that I did st stick through with it to the end anyways, because it turns out that I actually found a lot more to like in uh, the latter half of uh, their career after this point. Because next we got The Slip, also from uh, the same year, 2008. I was not expecting to like this one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, actually, it turns out this was, uh, one of the better ones. I mean, I, I, I don't have a lot to say about it. That, uh, it's nice, it's short, it's punchy. There's, yeah, there's a couple of ambient cuts in the back half that sort of tank the pacing a tiny bit, but, man, there wasn't anything on here that I, I didn't at least, I didn't at least enjoy for what it was. This is surprisingly an alright one. And then after that, in uh, 2013, we get Hesitation Marks, uh, which uh, I was not anticipating to see a return of the uh, a Pretty Hate Machine sound to come back. I mean, some people could say like, oh, this one doesn't rock his heart, there's not as many guitars. Th that's a good thing for me, obviously. Um, but uh, it's not as angry, it's not as aggressive, it's it's a lot poppier, it's a fucking airplane. It's it's a lot uh, fo more focused around, you know, like, actually writing good songs, actually putting together good hooks and melodies and that kind of stuff, instead of, you know, being all dark and raw and angry and aggressive and all that stuff. At the very least, I, uh, <laughs> the tunes on this one are good enough where I can see myself coming back to this one before I come back to the slip or with teeth, honestly. The slip may be tighter, but I think this one just had better tunes. After this, I listened to, uh, the Not the Actual Events and Add Violence EPs. I as I kind of, uh, I was told that they were in a trilogy as a lead up to their Bad Witch album. Uh, anyway, these two EPs, Eh, they're, they're, they're okay. Neither of them really show anything they haven't already done before. Not the actual events is some more industrial metal stuff. Uh, Ad violence is some slightly more down-tempo ones. Uh, I, I guess I like how Ad violence kind of ends all William Basinski-like, but aside from that, yeah, the, these are kind of skippable. And as a side note, I, uh, at the end of this marathon, I did very briefly uh, iTunes preview through their 1992 EP called Broken because I was told that was an important part of their catalog. I didn't listen to the whole thing because I assumed it was not going to be my thing. It was just, everyone said it was like all metal. Yeah, it, uh, the, from the from the bits that I've heard, I, I think my assumptions uh, are correct. But uh, getting back on topic, uh, next we have their uh, Bad Witch album, which I guess was the payoff to the EPs I was talking about. Uh, and this was way better than in those EPs. It's certainly a lot more adventurous than anything Nine Inch Nails had done in, like, decades, maybe. <laughs> I, I really like the, the kind of jazzier influence on this one. It's, it, there's clearly some inspiration from, uh, David Bowie's Black Star co coming into this one. And it's just nice and tight, and it's barely an album at all. It's only 30 minutes. It was obviously clearly planned as an EP first and then changed to an album because the, the EP's underperformed or something. But I mean, if any of those three projects would be ready to be upgraded to a full album, Bad Witch is the one. It is easily the best of the three. Hello, train. <laughs> it is easily the best of that trilogy. <laughs> and I might even hang on to it. We'll see. But that finally takes us to uh, the most recent pair of albums, uh, Ghosts 5 Together and Ghost 6 Locusts. Um, and I'm going to be blunt with these two and say that these are my personal favorite Nine Inch Nails albums. I mean, th this is kind of what I wanted Ghosts 1 through 4 to be, where that album was pretty much just a loose, scattered collection of demos. This one is like two actual albums. They're way more immersive. They're way more cohesive. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross have like had some practice scoring films in since 2008. 
And a side note, it kind of seems like a missed opportunity that these guys have not soundtracked a, a game in the Halo franchise for the pun, if nothing else. I, I guess Quake is close enough, I don't know. <laughs> Between these two albums, I definitely prefer uh, the second one. I prefer Locusts. Um, I think that album's a lot more varied, a lot more textured. It's got a lot more of a darker edge, where uh, together, um, that one is a lot more serene. It's a lot more Brian Eno. It's a lot less characteristic of Nine Inch Nails. And incidentally, it also kind of runs together a bit. But at the same time, I also, I feel like just taking one of these albums on their own is like you would be missing something. I feel like they need each other. I kind of like the tonal contrast they make and how like they play off each other sort of. And in any case, I think these stood out to me as my favorites because this was the one like, this was the one moment in the Nine Inch Nails discography where I felt like I actually was in my element. Like, I wasn't just some normie outsider looking in as a non-fan who isn't into this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I actually like. I know it really speaks to my depth of fandom that the, the, the freaking quarantine albums are my favorites among 30 plus years of like tons of critically acclaimed work and it's it's the freaking quarantine albums. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, uh, that's all the thoughts I have on uh, my marathoning of Nine Inch Nails. I, I don't think I really have anything more to say besides that. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Of course, this is all just my opinion. Uh, you can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list? Link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.